afternoon, everybody. Um, we'll call the meeting of the Board of Investment Enforcement to, uh, to order. Would you please call the roll? Mayor Pearson? I'm here. Tom Green? Here. President Reed? Here. President Reed. here. Okay. We have a little bit of uh, regular business to do today, and then we're going to hear uh, about the budget and hear the budget presentation today. So. We'll get the regular business hopefully going now. So the items presented for the first time today, item number one, 18.081, a request from the comptroller's office for approval of contracts and leases for various city departments as listed on Exhibit A. Number two, 18.082, request from the comptroller's office for approval of intra-departmental and inter-departmental transfers from various city departments as listed on Exhibit B. Number three, 18.083, request from the Comptroller's Office for approval of transfers between projects for capital improvement funds listed on Exhibit C. Number four, 18.084, request from the Director of Airports for approval to destroy the miscellaneous airport accounting materials management and police department records listed. I move for adoption of items one through four, but I do have a couple of questions about four. Second. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. A couple of questions about item number four. Yes, um, you know, we just, uh, you know, the request to destroy records uh, will come up periodically because of the, you know, the age of the records and things. Sure. Nature. I just think that number one, that description needs to be more descriptive, so we understand the, the timeline that that covers. Uh, but. I, I'd like to see if the airport director can walk us through what that includes this time. I'm not sure I have some thickness in front of you, but normally, overall, yeah. overall, yeah. normally when we talk about, when we talk about the construction of records, they have gone past the time frame which are required to keep them. Of course, that never includes emails or any electronic files that are transmitted. Those are always backed up. But most of these records, I mean, I don't know if you have the list at all. I don't um, have them. We have, we have, yes. we have okay. the list of the voucher news, the payment voucher that is exceeded the record retention of the All right. And this, um, so the payment voucher, so under the police department record, that would be payment vouchers? No one has what they do. No one else. Um, we don't require, and we don't ask for any destruction record that says, under any law or any request to maintain, so. Can I, I, I understand that, but uh, in the future, like for example, on here it says in, incident uh, reports and some of that kind of stuff, are those checked with the new public safety director um, to ensure that we are gonna stay in compliance with you know, the courts and the I mean, that, we uh, have beyond the just the, you know, the, and any records, of course, would be in the county for us. So, because of the airport is in the county, so we've got records relative to any police arrest and those would be in the county records. Okay. So, anything that we would have at the airport, and I can certainly uh, talk to Judge uh, Edwards, but anything that we would have wouldn't be relative to a case that's pending or relative to any evidence. Everything that we bring forward are just documents that don't have any legal bearing on the county be destroyed after the retention period. Um, I'd still like to, it, I'd still, I'd still like to have the public safety director sure. look at that stuff and, and say, okay, this is the policy that we're going to follow for document retention as it relates to public safety. Okay. The reason why is because after he came and uh, really enlightened the board on some nuances with the court system that, that, that we had not and I just think that it would be uh, prudent to do that. So. We can do that. Um, we'll, we'll do that going forward to make sure if you have to take a look at okay. it. We can certainly do that too. Okay. Right. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. You want to yeah. move forward with this? Uh, yeah. Um, can we remove the pup, uh, hold over the police department records for the next time, for the next meeting, and then we'll vote on the rest of the stuff like uh, materials management, airport accounting and that stuff. 
Let's just hold the list. That's okay. Oh, so we can just hold the list. Okay, thanks. I mean, if that's that's good. Yeah, that's fine. That's great. We can just hold it. Um, so I would amend your motion. I would amend my motion to uh, remove item number four. So my motion would be to approve items one, two, three as presented. So I will take my second um, and renew a second for your second motion. For your revised motion. Okay. All in favor of uh, passing the items one, two, and three? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None, hearing none, we uh, passed items one, two, and three, and item number four we'll hold over and bring back at the next meeting and we can figure out in more detail. That's fine. Okay, um, that's the uh, extent of the regular business here, and so we have the fiscal year 2019 annual operating plan uh, to be presented, and I'm going to turn that over to Paul to do, if that's agreeable with everybody. Thank you, Mayor. Sure. All right. Um, first page of the presentation. Uh, the, total, the total annual operating plan for 2019 totals. $1,112.4 million, $1.1 billion. That's an increase of 5.1% over the previous fiscal year. You can see how the categories of uh, funds are broken out. For the general fund, it's a proposed $516.6 million, which is a 0.7% increase over the previous fiscal year. And you can see in the special revenue category, $173.5 million. That's where most of the increase is because of the new uh, that's a 25.6% increase because that, full, that reflects the full year, the economic development sales tax, that, which went into effect in October. It also is going to reflect a full year of the new public safety sales and use tax fund, known as Proposition P, and that's about 23.4 million. And there's also a full year increase in, in use tax revenues from the economic development sales tax. That, that's the bulk of the increases in the special revenue category. In the grant fund category, 61.5 million, it's a 13.5% increase. That has actually got a, a police grants up $2.1 million, and Slate's budget is $5.6 million higher in those grant categories. On the debt service fund, it's flat at $5.9 million, an increase there in anticipation of the continued debt service obligations for general obligation debt. Capital improvements funds of $37.6 million. That's a decline of 5.6% or $2.3 million. Most of that's reflected because we have lower debt payments uh, coming up in the fiscal year, although this does include full allocations for both the ward and recreation capital accounts, and I'll be talking about that a little later. Um, enterprise funds at $232.6 million. That's a 2.7% increase. The water division is up $4.6 million, and they're most of a big chunk of that's going to be in improvement projects that they've got incorporated in their budget. Airport is up 1.6. And the internal service funds represents those funds which are charges among departments. And, and that's the biggest ones being the employee benefit funds. Uh, that $84.7 million total, that's a 4.6% increase. And that's mostly because of the health funds increasing health, premiums, health insurance premiums. And as the chart shows you, the general fund still remains the largest category of all those funds at 46% and just under half the budget. To the next page, uh, year to date, FY18, uh, our earnings tax uh, revenues were actually lagging in current year estimates through the third quarter. Payroll taxes were flat and sales taxes had some, seen some improvement in the third quarter, um, getting close to budget estimates. But overall, uh, Current year's fiscal revenues are trailing. I would say somewhere in the $5 million category. Now, I am told that we're getting some increases in corporate receipts in the, in the month of April, which we'll be continuing to watch. But we're going to be uh, tracking, we've taken steps this fiscal year already to try to control both expenditures and, and, um, and uh, trying to narrow that gap by the end of the fiscal year. And we may need a supplemental appropriation uh, by the end of the fiscal year. But, but, but the fourth quarter will be key to that. Where we proceed. And you can look on the charts. Earnings tax year to date up 1.6%. Uh, individual 
portion of that was up 2.2 percent, but the corporate receipts year to date were down 3.2. And as I mentioned, we'll see in the fourth quarter how those perform. Uh, payroll tax has been almost flat, 0.4 percent. Uh, it, typically, it's uh, the growth rate is over th over 2 percent, and uh, the 10-year growth rate is a little under one. It's sometimes it trails the earnings tax. It's a different base, um, but it has been trailing the earnings tax um, typically. The sales tax. Uh, in the prior year, it was actually down 3.2%. Year to date, it's up through the third quarter, it's up 2.3%, uh, although it is, it's never been a strong growth for us. Long-term growth rates are still um, below 1% per year. The next page is an illustration of generally what the, you know, when we project every year, we say, hey, what's our starting gap? And, and, and if you remember in the mid-year budget review, uh, we were looking at about a $14 million gap. Since that time, those third quarter estimates came in, and we did get the pension numbers. The pension numbers were slightly lower, about $2.5 million. So that, that still leaves us with a $10 million plus gap that we're addressing. If you're beginning revenue, starting with the beginning revenue base of $510.4 million, uh, reduce that by 5.5, and then add the refuse fee, which is $3.6 million, plus a, a, the growth of 1.6%, of $8 million, that gives you $516.6 million in total to, uh, to allocate. Take a general fund budget base of $510.4 million, and then you identify what you know as increases. Well, police, you know, civilian pay, uh, pay increases for police will be in Prop P, but we did have civilian pay increases over time, which is being overspent this year, and then health insurance increases of about 5.7. Now, offsetting that, we do have police pension costs coming down by 0.7. In the fire department, we have an expiration of a SAFER grant, which had hired 20 firefighters uh, for the last couple of years. That will be expiring during the year. We also have their civilian pay increases in health insurance of about 1.1. Now, off, off 1.1 million. Now, offsetting that, our fire pension costs went down by 1.5 million on the general fund. Non-uniform pay increases, health insurance, and pension costs uh, for everyone else, that would be about 3.4 million. We also have some changes in the lease debt obligations. Our Justice Center lease the general fund size is down $5.7 million. But we also have a couple of increases. We've got the first year payment on the Scott Trade Center debt of $1.5 million, and the Carnahan Courthouse debt, which we had two years of savings from uh, a prior year refinancing that uh, reduced it by 0. Uh, that increased 0 0.8. We also will have a, a payment for the cost of the state audit. This budget is proposed at 575000 as an estimate. We told the cost over a two or three year period to run from anywhere between one and a quarter to one point three quarter million dollars. So this would be the first year down payment on that amount. Workers' comp and unemployment costs up 600000 uh, We did have a request from personnel for uh, promotional testing for police and fire, about 600000 Forestry reef cutting was up 100000 Board of Elections is a, an election year next year, so we have four scheduled elections. So the cyclical uh, cost of that is included in the budget of 1.1 million. Of course, we have refuse, uh, refuse expending the uh, increase in fees uh, that were that was passed last year. We have truck purchases, and camera enforcement efforts, and trash task force of a 3.2 million dollar increase over the current fiscal year. Equipment services, rising fuel and repair costs, about half a million. And finally, uh, the one item that I included in here is something that I'll, and I'll address in a little bit more detail is a fund balance contribution for the first time that we have not, uh, we have not done this prior. It is basically a recommendation that we set aside some money to contribute to the fund balance. That's to be about 1.5% of pay, and it's $3.4 million. And, I'll, and I'll, there's a later slide where I'll discuss that in a little bit more in detail. But if you add all that up, and then you get about $5.6.5 .5 million, that's about a $10.5 million. Yeah. So I mean, it goes up and down depending on, on updating revenues and, and pension costs and stuff. But you're still in the double digits in terms of what you're looking at as a gap coming into fiscal year. Bridging that gap, uh, we've got about $5.4 million in budget cuts and reductions uh, scattered across departments. And that reduction is about 23 positions in the general fund. We also have about $5.1 million in appropriations from special revenues, uh, both use tax increase, the gaming fund increase, police and capital funds uh, uh, benefit from the gaming fund, and then some other minor ones. Uh, another large one was the Health Benefits Administration Balance, 
which uh, we had been, that's an internal service fund we could contribute to, and they actually had a balance that we were no longer, so we were able to reduce our costs there. And that's, that's a total of 10.5, which is basically summarizing how we balanced that gap. And in the following pages, it's just some highlights and changes in some of the, uh, in, uh, by department category, some of the changes. Mayor's office was down three vacant positions. Personnel was one position to a special fund, and we also continued to defer the promotional testing and fire and police departments. The controller was up two positions. That's about a $900,000 reduction. For uh, the parks department, we did add the uh, weed cutting, but they did have some attrition and salary savings of about 300000 So there were no additional cuts to services in that category. Judicial offices was down about $700,000. Circuit courts were down two positions. Circuit attorney, no change in positions, although some redu reduction in salary savings. Um, sheriff is down five positions, as re recommended by the courts, and the city court was down by three positions. County office is pretty much flat. Uh, the medical examiner is up 50,000, the reporter was down one position, other than that, that, and that's other than the election board increases. Streets also uh, pretty much flat. They, do, they are doing another addition of the, the LED project which continues to convert traffic lights or, or uh, street lights to LEDs and, you, and that's just a move to utility savings. Utility savings that are generated by that project will pay for the debt service on that, on the uh, conversion. In public safety, uh, building division is down three positions and there was a proposed restructuring. This is a, a change within the neighborhood stabiliz stabilization office, a proposed restructuring to um, reduce the number of NSOs by 12 and reorganize based on six police districts. So that would be a reduction of 12 NSO positions and one supervisor position for a reduction of about $800,000 in that office. Corrections, uh, which is having a lower census, uh, there has been a reduction in some of their contractual meals accounts, but we also included funding for the temporary AC units at NSI, which will be in it once again this summer. Public safety and police got an offsetting reduction in civilian uniform attrition salary savings of about 2.35 million. Um, that does not totally uh, offset overtime expenses, and we're going to have to watch them because they still are, they still do have elevated overtime expenses of about $10 million. And we've got a, you know, a little over nine in, in this budget, so that will continue to be something we're going to have to watch. Board of Public Service down about uh, 100,000. Facilities management is down one position. So those, that's sort of the summary of the reductions throughout the budgets. Going into page eight, summary of general fund revenue. The earnings tax continues to be our largest source of revenue in the general fund. It's estimated at 179.1 million, which is a 2.7% increase, uh, which puts it in line, that estimate puts it in line with its three and five year growth rates. 60, uh, the property tax, 62.3 million, that's a 1.5% increase. Although it's out, the property tax is outperforming in the current fiscal year. Again, on the long-term growth, three-year growth rate is about 1.4%, and three to five is 2.4. So it's within that range uh, in the estimate. Sales tax receipts, 53.9 million. It's a one, and again, you know, assuming a 1% growth, and assumes closer to the long-term growth rate for that tax. Uh, payroll tax, 2% million, $39.0 million, three to five year growth rates, 2.3 to 2.1%. And we're budgeting that at 2% for the next year. You do see a decrease in the franchise utility taxes uh, at 51.4 million, that's a 3.6% decrease. It's because this year, we received the benefit of a one-time settlement payment from Amor and UE of about a couple million dollars, and that's not gonna be recurring next year. So. Uh, Otherwise, we pretty much have flat estimates for the utility taxes. Undergovernmental receipts up $8.1 million. The biggest jump in that uh, category would be uh, prisoner reimbursements. This year, we're lagging because the state has delayed its payments. Uh, they go to a trustee and paying off the Justice Center debt that they were paid after the, the cutoff. And so this year, we're gonna be short on prisoner reimbursement, but that should make up a little bit for next year. And that's, that's going to be the biggest increase, about $1.8 million in that category. Also, have a slight increase in EMS revenues, as well as you know, the intangible tax, which is a tax paid by the financial institutions, which is 
uh, actually the tangible tax rate had an actual reduction in that. Uh, this year was an exceeding. 1.8%. Right. Not $1.8 million. No, in prisoner reimbursement, it's 1.8 million. But the decline, the, the increase was 8.1%. The uh, departmental fees and fines, it's a 56.5 million dollars. It's a 2.5 percent increase. Most of that increase you're going to see in refuse, which is this is the full year of the 3.6 million dollar increase. Because last year we implemented during the year, so you got the impact of the full year's increase. Other category, 32.9 million, mostly through transfers. It's pretty flat with the previous fiscal year. And if you can look at the the graph. Illustrating uh, general fund revenue, you can still see the earnings tax at 35% of the general fund budget. Still our largest source. On the general fund expenditure side, I won't go too much detail. I've sort of highlighted these already. On the general government, uh, $26.4 uh, million, 9.2% increase. The biggest increase in that category is in the city councilor's office, reflecting about a $2 million increase in, in set aside for Judgment accounts uh, for the city. Um, the finance department, 8.6 million, just slightly down, 1.2%. Non departmental category, that's general category, uh, not specific to any one department, it's got our unemployment comp and disabilities and, and, and all that, uh, as well as our debt service payments. That's a drop of 6.5%, and that reflects the Justice Center payment down 5.7 million, as well as the increase related to Scott Trade and, and Carnahan as well as the, as the cost for the state audit, which is next year. Parks, Recreation, and Forestry Department, uh, 21.4 million, that's a 1.6% increase, pretty much flat, there's nothing particularly new right there. Uh, judicial offices, 47.1 million, slightly lower, courts were flat, the sheriff has got those position reductions in it. Um, the county offices, 9.7 million, 15.6% increase, mostly reflecting that election board Election uh, increase for over four elections next year. Streets, uh, 39 million, that's a 7.6% increase, and that's for the full year of the refuse uh, effort, the enforcement and uh, collection effort. Public safety in the general fund side, at least, it is pretty flat, it's $290.1 million. You're going to see most of the increase in public safety is going to be on the Prop P category, which I'll get to in a minute. Uh, human services, uh, $1.5 million, 2% reduction. They did have some one-time uh, costs associated with opening the Diddle House last year, that which were not repeated this year. And the Board of Public Service, $35.2 million. It's a 1.9% increase. Most of the increase in that category would be for Equipment Services Division, which are up because of the increase in cost of repairing the city's um, vehicle fleet. And if you look from the, the uh, pie chart down below, uh, again, public safety, 56% of the general fund budget. <clears throat> Going to slide 10, uh, this is a discussion of some of the changes in the special funds. Under the local use tax uh, receipts year to date were up 23%. That reflects the in, uh, in income related to the economic development sales tax increase, as well as online sales. We, we've seen that, if you remember, Amazon started collecting sales tax sales tax, which we see in the form of use taxes uh, back in February, and that's been uh, coming in as we've seen it. It was currently overestimate, so that, that's one area where we've seen uh, receipts coming in above estimate. In FY19, we're estimating at $33.7 million, and it has a little of a fund balance there. But you can see from the chart, uh, the allocation includes affordable housing, was fully allocated as regular $5 million, plus a $500,000 increase. Um, which, so we would be receiving $5.5 million in use tax funds, and they also uh, appropriated $257,000 in their fund balance. So their total budget is $5.8 million next year. Healthcare trust, full allocation of $5 million, and we also have a full allocation for building demolition at, at $3 million, just $2 million over the original budget, $1 million over the supplemental. And then the excess use tax, uh, it's comprised of a number of things, uh, refuse, uh, Bulky pickup is 700,000. Housing Conservation Districts get 2.3 million. Police is 9.9 million. And as I mentioned, 2.2 of that is being used to address the budget gap. Health Division of 7.2 and Human <coughs> Services of 0 0.4 million dollars for a total of 20.5 million dollars, and the total use tax budget of 34.3 million. 
And the economic development sales tax, again, as I mentioned, it's going to be a full year of receipts for that tax. It's estimated at 20.6 million. I should ask them, I should mention that the 20.6 million is higher proportionally than the other sales taxes simply because it's not subject to TIF uh, deductions. So that makes it higher than the regular uh, half cent sales tax. And that is allocated per ordinance um, for those categories you see listed there. Transit at 60%, that's $12.4 million. Neighborhood stabilization at 10%, 2.1 million. Workforce development, 2.1. Public safety infrastructure also at 2.1. And city infrastructure, which is incorporated into the capital fund at $2.1 million. And the Latin building demo funds still have the, the certificate of inspection uh, fees remaining in the general fund. And the lead, the lead fund balance is estimated at about $3.2 million at the end of this fiscal year. The building demo and board up fund uh, currently received $500,000 from the USAC demo fund to reduce their deficit, uh, which has been persistent in that fund. Although with the increasing uh, fees we were getting in building inspection, that has been reduced to about a $1.1 million range by the end of the fiscal year. As I mentioned earlier, one of the increases we've seen in the current fiscal year is in the gaming fund. Revenue was up 13.8% through FY, uh, actually 18, 18 third quarter. Um, that is uh, actually reversing a number of years' trends that we've seen in that uh, fund. Uh, so uh, the FY 19 budget of 7.4 million is up $1.1 million, and that's been allocated to both the capital fund and the, uh, the police budget. Page 11, this is a, uh, illustration of the half cent public safety, the new half cent public safety sales tax in USAC known as Proposition P. Sales, it's got two components of the sales tax revenue estimated at $19.5 million as a half cent, as well as the use tax revenue estimated at $3.9 million that results from that increase in the sales tax rate. So the total estimate of $23.4 million. And this was, has been allocated as specified by ordinance. Uh, the police department uh, gets 66% of the sales tax portion for the $6,000 pay increase plus benefits and pension of $12.83 million. The fire department is allocated 28% of that also for the $6,000 pay increase plus benefits and pension of about $5.5 million. <coughs> and the circuit attorney gets 6% for, uh, which are budgeted for staff and raises of about 1.2. And that's, that's the $19.5 million for the sales tax. Now, in addition to that, uh, the use tax portion, uh, that also has its own formula allocations. After school and summer jobs was allocated 25% of that, uh, or about 975,000 of that amount. Youth, youth jobs within the Director of Public Safety uh, budget and special fund is budgeted at $275,000. And there's also a proposed youth cadet program in the police department for $700,000 uh, as a program for uh, for youth interested in future careers in law enforcement. The circuit attorney also gets a percentage of the use tax portion of this tax as well, 7.7%, again, for staff and raises. It's about $300,000. Bringing uh, that office has increased to the total of $1.5 million from Prop P. There's recreation programming allocated 25%. Uh, that includes um, recreation division, which gets, a, which is budgeting for 11 new recreation positions, including 10 rec leaders and one supervisor, as well as contractual programming, which is in the Director of Parks budget. Those, again, combined uh, add up to $975,000. There's an allocation of 17.3% uh, of USAC funds for building demolition, which uh, supplements our other building demo fund of $675,000. And there was a 25% allocation for social works and mental health, which is being budgeted under the Human Services. They will be adding two positions and have some contracts as well, a uh, portion of which uh, the subsidy and public administrator and community mediation. The next slide illustrates some of our uh, proposed capital fund budget, 37.6 million. As I mentioned earlier, is a decrease of $2.2 million from the previous year. Uh, it's mostly lowered to the decline of schedule debt. However, it does have all half cent al al allocation for ward accounts and uh, recreation accounts. Um, I'll go through some of the il illustrations. You see the existing citywide debt of 14.9 million. That's for the Justice Center, uh, which is down to 3.5 million in the capital budget. Carnahan debt service of 2.2 million. The 
garage is central industrial for 1.5. We also have rolling stock uh, lease purchases of 4.7. We do have a small increase in our in the rolling stock lease purchases in the coming year for $5.3 million in new equipment. I can tell you, just from sitting in the capital committee, that is far less than what we currently need. And so it's sort of a drop in the bucket, but it is something. Uh, and so it is something we're going to have to continue to try to find money for going ahead, going in the years ahead. Uh, other citywide capital of 2.1 million. Most of that, at least a little over half, is for courts improvements, both the juvenile roof um, as well as uh, elevator work in the civil courts building and ventilation and pump repair in the civil courts building. We also have a third year uh, project related to the ash tree uh, uh, removals for the forestry program, and then uh, some small amounts for both information systems of $150,000 and DPS for other building repairs, which again would be of $350,000, which would fall short generally of what we really need uh, for that category. Um, in the ward improvements accounts, that $9.2 million, again, that's full allocation of the half cent sales tax. Last year we allocated only 75%. This is a $2.8 million increase over the previous fiscal year. Major in neighborhood parks is $7.7 million. Of that amount, $3.8 million is for existing debt service, utilizing mostly half some sales tax and other special sales tax funds for servicing that debt. And then the rec center improvements of $600,000. And again, that's a full allocation of the half some sales, the, their 3% share of the half some sales tax. And police department improvement is of $1.8 million, and that's, on, that's entirely for debt service. That's for the debt service on the command centers that, that we're, in, we're still paying the debt on, plus the contribution to the uh, offsetting of the Justice Center debt, which includes the holdover that used to be at police headquarters. Um, I should point out that in terms of our capital fund, nearly half, or uh, over half, $20.7 million is for existing debt service payments. So that's why. It, it, continues to restrict what our discretionary abilities are when it comes to capital investment. The next slide addresses changes in personnel by, by fund category. As I mentioned, the general fund at 4,988 is down by 23 positions. Most of those scattered throughout. The general government is down five. Uh, judicial, government, judicial officer is down by nine. County office is down by two. Public safety, uh, with the fire, with the expiration of the SAFER grant, actually the fire department general fund will be up, but with the reorganization as NSOs and that proposal, that would be down by about 16. So in the special fund categories, most of those are up because of Prop P. You're going to see, and that's only a coincidence, it happens to be 23 up. Uh, the recreation um, uh, is up by 11 positions. They're funding the Prop P funds. Human services also up in, in its Prop P category at 2. Uh, building divisions up by three. I should point out, it's in the grant funds, that decline of 36 is actually uh, reclassing in, in slate. They, they have included per performance people in their personnel schedule when usually we don't, and that's more of a technical, technical change, because you'll see their per performance budget went up. It's sort of an inside baseball thing. But, uh, so it's more of a correction of what they had before. Enterprise funds, uh, water division, that's 886 positions. Up by five, water is up by five, four, airports up by one. So total funded positions, 6,595 down by 32 positions. And you can see the chart below, public safety by far is still the largest category, 3,360 of those totals. And the following page, it doesn't need much discussion, I, just an illustration over the 10 year history. And you can see over the 10 year period prior to FY19, we're down over 700 positions. 400 which are general fund and the rest are in the special fund categories. Skipping to page 15, uh, always include a cost discussing pension costs. FY19 budget will see a slight drop in, in the cost of not including the increases we're anticipating from the Prop D salary raises. So that's while they're budgeted, we're not, that does not include those yet in this, in this illustration. Uh, the total cost, uh, all funds, $82.3 million is about a $2.5 million uh, decrease. Uh, ERS, uh, PRS is budgeted at 28, uh, ERS is budgeted at 28.4, FRS and FRP at 17.6, and PRS at 36.6 million right now. 
The next slide gives you sort of, this is a very busy slide, but it gives you the details of all the pension systems and the status. Um, most of them are currently either 80% funded. The new FRP plan being only four years old is about 60% funded. The note off to the side, I want to mention, while the funding ratios are improving, we are entering in our 10th year of economic expansion. So it's, I don't know if you remember going back to the 90s when we were at this stage in the economic cycle, most of our funds were over 100% or more. So, it, so while you see some improvement in the funded status, it's still, uh, we're still not to where we need to be. And the cost for maintaining those contributions are high. We still have, if you look at Across, across all systems, we're still about 40, $430 million in unfunded liabilities in those systems. And the cost for employee remains high, as illustrated down below. So for instance, we're spending nearly 50% of salary on fire pension, or on police salaries, on just on pension contributions alone. So that's, that's a, a high contribution. So that's still something that's gonna, uh, what we need to be focusing on in the future. On the following page, uh, I have a slide to discuss the unreserved general fund balance. This is an illustration, it's something that we're proposing in this coming fiscal year. One of the, the importance of the fund balance is, is the, the importance of having a fund balance is basically because anytime you, have, you need sufficient reserves necessary to weather severe economic downturns like the last recession or sudden losses of revenue or increasing expenditures. One of the things I'd like to point out on that chart you can see in FY09, and, and by the way, our, our current reserve balance is about, policy is about 5% of the budget. We do about $25, $28 million. We are about out, at that level in FY09. And if you look at the FY10 and 11 on that chart, you can see the impact of the recession. We had a draw in, in, on a cash basis of $17.6 million in just those two fiscal years alone. That actually is more than what we have in our fund reserve balance currently on cash basis. It just sort of highlights the, the, the importance of getting back up to where we need to be. As I mentioned, our, our minimum target of 5% of the budget would be 25.8, uh, and that's 5%. Typically, you see higher targets of more closer to 10% being the norm. Uh, and we're currently at about 16 and a half. So what the budget proposes is a mechanism for funding this on an annual basis at 1.5% of the salaries, which in the proposed budget would be about $3.4 million. And hopefully we can adopt this as a continuing thing and we do. This is similar to our, how we fund the 27th pay reserve, which happens every 11 years. We fund it in, in just as a matter of good practices that we do this every year. And finally, just sort of a recap on the total FY19 budget. Uh, $1.1 billion is a 5.1% increase over the previous fiscal year. It has, incorporates the full year budgets for the new funds, the economic development half cent sales tax, as well as the half cent public safety sales and use tax known as Prop P with amounts allocated as specified for the ordinance. It has full allocations of use tax funds for affordable housing plus an additional $500,000 in building demolition, as well as capital funds for ward capital and the rec, and the rec centers. The general fund budget at 516.6 million is a 0.7% increase. It includes funding for new initiatives, such as refuse, and also, but also proposes cuts in reorganizations where possible to achieve savings, preserve core services, and keep the budget in balance. Also establishes, importantly, uh, an annual mechanism for strengthening our fund balance. Uh, while the budget is balanced, we still have continuing long-term challenges. As I mentioned earlier, we're about to enter our 10th year of economic expansion. It also means that we're one year closer to the next recession. Our uh, next year, uh, strengthening the revenue growth base. Uh, last year, our revenues grew. True. <laughs> our, our revenues grew by less than one percent last year. We are, we'll, we'll hopefully see about a one point six percent increase this year, and then of course we need to strengthen our reserves. Continuing pension reforms. That's something that we obviously need to focus on. And then finally, financing of capital needs. We our list of. Uh, Deferred capital improvements that continues to get longer. Now we do have the proposed public safety. Uh, we do have the proposed uh, general obligation bond issue in August, which hopefully will address some of that. But even so, um, continued rolling stock and other improvement needs are, are needed. And that's the extent of the presentation. Entertaining uh, questions or sure discussion. Well, 
I'll start. Uh, okay. First of all, thank you uh, for putting uh, together this budget. Uh, it's done very well, and it looks like you put a lot of time, you and your staff, uh, not only time, you put a lot of thought into it uh, with regard to some of the reorganizations. I want to applaud you on fully funding those areas that had not been fully funded for years, the demolition areas, the ward capital area, and affordable housing. And uh, not only did you fully fund affordable housing, but you show an increase of $800,000, and so I applaud you for that. I also applaud you for establishing the annual mechanism for strengthening the fund balance. And in your presentation to us, you asked that we would approve that to be an ongoing policy. And so I am extremely um, um, moved by this because I understand the importance of it. And so I am willing to make a motion that would be uh, to establish it as a separate policy that we would uh, continue throughout so that we can be ready for those uh, economic downturns that are surely to come. And as you know, when we were hit with one, we did have a fund balance that had been built up with a policy that was set for it to be at 5%. And that helped us weather that storm where instead of any layoffs, we were able to have uh, certain other kinds of, of um, means of, of reductions. And we also reduce each and every year that fund balance in order to meet some of our uh, expenditures. So it's important. <coughs> so I would like to make a motion at this time, if that's okay with the board, and you know, I know we're gonna have Second. further discussions. Yep. Thank you. Uh, that we would establish the annual mechanism for strengthening the uh, fund balance, and it would be at one and a half percent of payroll each and every year. I think we have a motion and a second. Sorry. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I think we all agree on the importance of that um, because, frankly, $16 million in fund balance on a $520 million budget is yeah. just, just a pittance, uh, and it's not enough for us to be fiscally responsible. Now, we got there because of um, s severe, dire economic downturn some eight years ago or so, but it's good to take this move, I think. Yeah, I think it's a great move. Uh, I also uh, wanted to just, uh, as I complete my remarks, I, I had not um, made reference to you earlier about um, the crossing guards. <laughs> and <laughs> I just wanted to just bring it up, $100,000, I don't know that it's in the base, it wasn't in the base, uh, and I wanted to make sure they were covering it this year. And I, I'm sure last year just kind of didn't come up and we didn't know. Yeah. And I know this yeah. board would not have allowed that to happen. Absolutely. And so Paul, Thanks it's up to you <laughs> to remind the three of us that uh, we Absolutely. want to fund those streets that go beyond that school structure, <coughs> that school building that once those kids get out of school and they're yelling and screaming and hollering and trying to cross those streets, the city becomes uh, responsible and we wanna make sure that we're hiring those guys in the streets department that uh, understand they love their jobs. And they, um, you know, we don't want them to show up on Friday morning and say, where's our money? What are we gonna do? You know, so, so Paul? I, I can tell you that I, my recollection from last year is that there was a reduced budget for that last year, and, mm -hmm. and the supplement was to be from some other source of funds. I can tell you that the current budget has the same amount as was budgeted, well, actually it's $10,000 10, lower. Uh, well, but the same, well, I'll tell you, it was the same amount budgeted for school crossing guards as last year. So to the extent to that doesn't have, get supplemented by some other source, you would, there would need to be an addition of funds for that. Okay, I would love an adjustment there so we can say that that's fully funded and maybe working with the streets department, maybe Todd could, you know, help somehow come up with that so that we won't be short. And whatever help I can be to assist, I'll, I'll you know, want to make that happen. 
I agree with that. It's not a motion, but it's a lot to figure it out. I just said one thing. All uh, the increase in the gaming revenue, mm -hmm. uh, what are we attributing that to? Do you think that we're going to see you know, increases in the out years, or do you think that was just a, a bump because of some of the other yeah, I, additional tax? Gaming has been one of those where, and I, I was looking up these numbers before, in FY10, we received $13.1 million a day. In FY17, it had declined to 6.7. So that was a decline. It, so it was almost down by $6 million. Now, some of those things were, well, you had the South County Casino open, which took off some funds. And then they were operated by the same company at one point, where I, I, I'm not so sure that uh, was the best for the, the, the downtown casino, because now that they've separated uh, ownership, we've seen some in, an increase in this past fiscal year. Uh, to where we're going to expect $7.4 million. I, I would think that we'd be hard pressed to expect to have a 13% increase every year. I, 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 so I'm expecting sort of a flat performance. I saw a little bit of tapering off in February because the year over year comparisons started getting a little bit tougher because we've already started seeing those increases. Now, however, March was up, so we'll, we'll follow that. But I've got it. From an estimate standpoint, I've got a, a sort of a repeat of the current year, but not an increase over the current year. But there isn't uh, anything that can point to an increase in conventions or anything like that. Or, uh, yeah, I can't. Other than the, the, the change in ownership, which has gone back I think, maybe two years now. I think the Lumiere has had a new uh, person there for a little bit. And, um, That's good. That's encouraging. Yeah, it, it does reverse a, a long-term decline. Yeah, it, it's, it's funny. Uh, some earlier conversations we had with other revenues that had declined over the years. The tele I looked at these numbers. For instance, uh, just the way in which telecom, you get those services. Uh, FY10, we, this is the utility tax on communications, $16.7 million. FY18, 10.4. It's simply because we're receiving our services in either telecommunications or, or, or video or, or you know, just in a different manner, and, it, and it's affecting our tax base. Now, reversing that a little bit is, uh, is somewhat in use tax where we've seen Amazon sales start contributing to that. But it, but it's, it's all, it underline, underscores the importance of keeping our tax structure reflective of the changing way people do business. I also agree with all the comments that the council made. Um, you guys really worked hard on the budget and I appreciate it. Uh, and I know the board's looking forward to getting you know, into <laughs> Sorry, so you'll hear from me. But thank you. Paul, a um, comment and sort of a question. So $82 million in pension obligations, yes. plus we will have the increase in pension related to Prop P, which will be about another uh, six million dollars between police and fire, six or seven. I don't remember. You don't have to give me the exact number. Actually, that, I do have that. Um, um, so it was about four and a half uh, between between fire and police. Police and fire was the amount attributable to Prop P. Right, but we'll okay. get those actual numbers from the action rate. Yeah, I know. So we just so. Uh, we're at about $87 million in pension obligation this year out of a $510 or $20 million general revenue budget. And I know some of it yes. is paid out of other funds, right. but when you think about our general revenue budget, which is where the salaries are, um, uh, what percent is that? that? That's about 16 or 17, 18 percent of our general revenue budget is being spent on our pension obligations. Now these are promises that we made to employees years ago and along the way, and so we have to do that. But it's just, you know, eighty-seven million dollars in pension obligations is, is, uh, you know, it, it sucks up any increase we ever had in revenue. Oh, sure. Um, and and we're looking at a year when um, the market's been pretty good the last three or four years, and so uh, you know that won't last forever. Yeah. Uh, so. Then one other thing, so on the, we contribute about, round numbers, $7,000 per, 
per employee who's in the who's a regular city employee, not a uniform employee. Right. Twenty-five million dollars for a fire department employee, and thirty not not million twenty-five thousand dollars for a fire department uh, uniform fire, and twenty-nine thousand dollars per police officer. And is there somewhere on here that I mean these numbers are really affected by the number of people who are retired, or not so much? That's a contributing factor. I actually looked at that uh, earlier on the police side and there was something like uh, there were more retirees than active uh, employees in right. that, in, yeah. in that. I think it was something like active represented 45% and then the rest were either um, retirees or beneficiaries. Right. So every police officer we hire and every fireman <coughs> or firewoman we hire, we've got to, uh, in addition to their salary, we've got to take into account health insurance and all that, of sure. course, but also 30, 25 to 30 thousand dollars on top of their salary for the pension obligation. That's correct. And, and that's by far the largest piece of the benefit set. Of course, yeah. Okay, good. I just wanted to see if that was, those are really, the, it really was like that, and it is. Okay. I'll add the, big, the, the other challenge you have is when you do get that economic downturn, while revenues start declining, yeah. the yeah. contributions go the other way, go up. That's right. why you can see a swing from a 15, 10, 15 million dollar budget debt, all of a sudden it becomes 30. Because Correct. just the way that because the the value of the investments is down, so you have to put in more to be able to pay the benefits. Correct. Okay. On the um, one, I think this is my final question. On the fund reserve page, page seventeen. So um, our our fund balance right now is about sixteen and a half million. Okay. And and you're showing it the same for next year. Why is that? Because you, it won't come in until until the year's over. Yeah, what I okay. what this what this reflects is at the beginning of the fiscal year how much you have in reserves. So, I see. Yeah. Okay, I got it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Good job. Um, I appreciate all your work on this and everybody in your department because okay. I know. I, I, was, I was I was going to say I I know that you know you. You know, you don't, how many people in your department? Three? Five. Five, okay. So this is, this is a big job to put this together. And I'm, I'm, I'm really pleased that, um, you know, we've been able to fully fund some of the commitments that we've made before. And, um, you know, we always have choices to make about how we're spending the money. And so I'm, I'm pleased we're able to do this. I hope the Board of Aldermen will see it similarly. <laughs> <laughs> we do. <laughs> <laughs> Portable housing was a big result. So yeah. I'm happy that that's at 5.8. Right. And that's, that's yeah. So, um, Friday morning is a public, public hearing on the budget. And next Monday at in the afternoon, 2 o'clock, I think, we'll be back here. Uh, the idea being to, if, if, if it works like we want it to, vote the budget out and send it over to the Board of Aldermen to be introduced as Board Bill number one. Okay. Thank you all. I moved it, John. Second. <laughs> all, all in favor. favor. Aye. Aye. <laughs> Thank you.